Hey, what is up guys? It's Stan here back with another video. In this one, I'm gonna to try to answer the question whether or not it's necessary to use CAT6 or CAT6A cables with 10 gigabits. Or in other words, is it possible to get away with CAT5E for your 10 gigabit deployment? And I think the answer is gonna surprise you a little bit. So let's get into it. Several weeks ago, I uploaded a video talking about how I bought this brand new house, new construction house. However, unfortunately, by the time I got to it, all of the drywall was already up and painted and all of the ethernet cables were already laid and inaccessible. Now, the problem with that is that the builder went with Cat5e cabling as opposed to Cat6 or Cat6a cabling. Now, all of my hardware for networking and everything on all the computers are all 10 gigabit capable at, at the old place I was running a 10 gigabit network. Now, just because I don't wanna tear out all the cabling again, I wanted to see what I can get away with uh, with that Cat5e cabling. And the answer is actually very surprising. And spoiler alert, it worked just fine for my case for 10 gigabits, but there are some limitations and uh, let's actually dig into what Cat5e cabling can and it cannot do. So. Let's take a look at the computer. What you're seeing here is the Ubiquiti Unify Design Center. And this is one of the features of the Unify system. And as a refresher, I've got a Dream Machine Pro SE, and I've got the in-wall uh, Wi-Fi access points. So if you have a layout that you have, which, which I got, this is the actual blueprint or the, the sketch up of my house here and you put in all the walls and put in all of the access points, it will actually show you the distances of the Wi-Fi and the Wi-Fi coverage of my house. So you'll see that I've got three in-wall access points, one, or actually two in-wall access point and one um, standalone U6 mesh. So this is the five gigahertz coverage. You can see pretty good in the master bedroom, game room, and in you know, studio here. Uh, generally pretty good coverage with two gigahertz band in the green in most places in the house. So the coverage is just fine. Um, and uh, it's actually a pretty cool little utility. It, it takes into account the walls and windows and, and, and whatnot. So that's basically what you're looking at here. Now, we're not here to talk about that. We're here mainly to talk about the distances for the network. So I've got my Dream Machine SE, so this is the router, and then I've got an aggregation switch in the master closet right here. Uh, this is kind of central location or, or pretty central location for the house here. And from here, we've got the existing ethernet lines. Of course, this is as the crow flies, but uh, this is a pretty close idea of what you're looking at. So from here to here, here to here, this is where all of my switches are. Now, I've got computers in the game room and I've got computers in bedroom number two, which is the studio I'm actually recording in right now. And that's the main two rooms that I'm interested in, in getting 10 gigabits. Now, the computers here, because this is a short run and you can see here, if I hover over it, it says 36 feet. So what you're looking at is 36 feet of straight runs, uh, what it doesn't take into account is the height of the ceiling. So if you're talking about something on the ground here, so it's about what, eight, nine feet up, let's just round up 10 feet up, uh, 36 feet over and then 10 feet down, that's 40, 50, 56 feet of cabling Cat5e. Uh, this works just fine. And on the computers there, we're getting 10 gigabits of, of signal here. This room, however, this room is a little bit further away. This says 40, 49 feet. Sorry, I can, let me zoom in a little bit. There you go, 49 feet. And 49 feet plus 20 feet, 10 feet up, 10 feet down. So that's almost 60, 70 feet run. And this run is the one that was a little bit more iffy. And what you see here is that the connection is good for 10 gigabits. And indeed, if you do a file transfer, from the NAS that I have everything connected to, you can see that I'm getting 600, 700, 800, even 900 megabytes per second. 
Uh, it's fluctuating, and this is really the capability of the NAS more so than the connection speed. But uh, it's good for, you know, it's good for that 10 gigabits per second. This 69 feet is just about the limit of Cat 5e 10 gigabit because I've got let's say a five feet patch cable that's Cat 6 cable here, and then I also have a Cat 6 about four or five feet patch cable going into the network stack. So really this run is about mm, 70 feet of cat 5e and then maybe another 10 feet of cat 6. However, the patch cable, the cat 6 cable patch cable that I created to go from the network cabinet into the stack ended up being a low enough quality that it dropped my 10 gigabit down to 5 gigabits per second. So I actually was struggling with five gig connection over this line and I had to swap out my own patch cable that I created for a Cat 6A shielded cable that I installed here. And it's another, what, four or five feet shielded cable. And that right there, that was the difference between five gigabits per second and six gigabits per second. So if I go ahead and swap that cable over, and I'll be right back and let me do that, what you'll find is that immediately goes down to five gigabits per second. And no matter what you do, you can't get this to go back up to 10 gigabits. And that's just due to the degradation of the signal, the crosstalk of the cable that I created. Now, I don't think there's anything wrong with the Cat6 cable that I created, but it's just that extra little bit of uh, a patch cable that I created versus a shielded cable, uh, a shorter shielded cable, that is just the difference. So I guess the takeaway is that 70 feet is right on the raggedy edge and maybe a couple of feet of Cat6 egg or Cat6 cables, uh, patch cables, just round up a little bit. Let's say 75 feet is the max limit of Cat 5e. So, uh, the, also the takeaway is that if you've got a a medium sized house, and, and again, again, this is a 2,500 square feet single story house, so the runs are a little bit on the longer side here. But if you've got a normal size, let's say even a 2,500, 3,000 square foot two story house, you'll probably be okay running 10 gigabits per second on Cat5e. With all that said, that's actually really good news because a lot of your houses are Cat5e enabled or cabled up and uh, especially if your house is 5, 10, 15 years old, uh, you're still probably good for at least 5 gigabits per second if not all the way up to 10 and you know right now uh, AT&T U-verse internet is fiber you get 5 gigabits per second through the landline through the fiber line. And a lot of your computers have that 2.5 gigabit ethernet. So you probably be okay running a lot of those networks, especially at 2.5 or even five gigabits, um, you know, or even up to 10. Now, if this video was useful for you guys, make sure to hit that like button. And if you wanna see more videos like this, tech tutorials and reviews, go ahead and consider subscribing. As always, my name is Stan and I'll see you guys in the next one.